Hey, what's going on guys? Andrew here, and today we're taking a look at the new Dell Inspiron 15 5000 series. This one's the 5576. You can configure this with the new AMD GPUs or go with the NVIDIA GTX 1050. All right guys, let's see if this laptop is worth picking up. Dell just introduced the new Inspiron 15 5000. It's basically replacing the 7559 as a lower end model. It's using the same design and there's two price points. The 15 inch AMD version starts at 649 and the 15 inch Intel version starts at 799. Here's a quick view of the bottom panel. Here you got your two row rubber feet, mini subwoofer, and your exhaust vent. And best of all, what sets the Dell apart from the gaming pack is how easy it is to upgrade your laptop. Just simply remove one screw and boom, you have access to the internals. Here goes your 5400 RPM traditional hard drive, mini subwoofer, 74 watt hour battery pack, which is a six cell by the way, M.2 SSD slot, two RAM slots, which are expandable to 32 gigs, your dual fan setup, and your wireless card. The interior actually looks pretty clean and stylish, especially for a budget game laptop under 800 bucks. You get that same soft touch coating on the interior, which I really love. Let's take a look at the ports here on the left side. You got your charging port, exhaust vent, two USB 3 and your headset microphone jack combo. By the way, this laptop weighs 5.43 pounds and one inch thick. Here goes your Kensington security lock slot, RJ45 ethernet, HDMI 1.4, unlike HDMI 2.0 on the Inspiron 7567, USB 3 and an SD card reader. There's some minimal keyboard flex here, especially towards the middle. It's not going to be a rock solid like its bigger brother, the 7567. However, it's not going to be too bad either. There is a lot of display flex towards the middle of the laptop by the Dell logo. However, it's not to the point where I'm going to panic. The trackpad on here is solid. It's using Windows Precision drivers and it's very smooth like butter. One of the best trackpads on the market in terms of budget gaming laptops. This laptop features a 15.6 inch Full HD TN panel, which is pretty similar to one found in the base model of the Inspiron 7567. That was the only thing holding me back from recommending that laptop. Remember in my video review I said hopefully Dell will offer a $50 upgrade for an IPS panel upgrade? Well guess what, now they have a $50 build to order option for an IPS panel upgrade and now we have a whole new ball game in terms of best budget gaming laptops for under $1000. The color gamut comes in at a very low score of 59% for the sRGB and 44% for the Adobe RGB. The brightness is about average, it came in at 215 nits, which is right on par with the other gaming laptops in this range. Here's a quick comparison between a TN panel and an IPS. The TN's on the left, and the Inspiron 7567 with the new IPS is on the right. Overall, with an IPS panel, you're going to get a much wider viewing angle and a much better picture without having to fuss with it. The overall performance from this keyboard is actually pretty good. You get a standard full-size keyboard with a 10 numeric keypad to knock out those punches. The key travel is decent, however the tactile feedback and response from these keys offer excellent feedback. One minor change on this year's model is the red backlighting and red keys. The chip power on this laptop is an AMD FX 9830P which is a quad core Bristol Ridge processor. The performance is pretty good, especially multi-core, however it still lacks behind its Intel counterparts. Based on the performance numbers, this chip is probably comparable to a Core i5-7200U which is a dual core KB Lake processor. Now keep in mind, the Intel version of this laptop, you can get quad core H series chips, which offer much better performance. The AMD version of this laptop features the AMD Radeon RX 460 with 4GB of GDDR5. The performance is good, however it's not that great compared to GTX 1050. Performance wise, it's probably on par with the 965M. So if you want the best performance, make sure you get the GTX 1050. Next up, here's a quick test of Overwatch running at 1920 by 1080p on low settings. So far I'm getting an average around 65 to 75 frames per second. Certain scenes will be higher, it just depends on the situation. And our last test here is Battlefield 4, running at 1920 by 1080p. I was getting an average around 45 to 55 frames per second, which is on par with the 965M. However, keep in mind some action packed scenes will drop the frames down to 35 to 40. With the fans running at full throttle, you're going to get around 48 to 50 decibels. With light to medium usage, you can hear it running, however it's very well contained. After about 45 minutes of Battlefield 4 gameplay, the average GPU temperature was around 73 degrees Celsius, with a maximum GPU temp of 80 degrees Celsius. I was going to post some results from the Fleur 1 camera, but that thing broke down on me. I'm going to have to get another one. But keep in mind, the AMD version does run a bit hotter than the Intel counterpart with the GTX 1050. There are two top facing speakers on top, and the sound quality is decent. It's not loud by any means, however the low end is very weak, even with that included mini subwoofer. Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here, testing out the webcam on the new Inspiron 5576. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. This laptop features a 6-cell 74-watt-hour battery pack, which is also found on last year's Inspiron 7559 and this year's 7567. This model I'm getting around 4.5 to 5.5 hours with medium screen brightness. You can also game on the battery pack and get around an hour and 25 minutes. So let's get to the closing thoughts and final recap of the Dell Inspiron 15 5000 series. The model number is 5576. The AMD version starts at 650. 
and the Intel version clocks in at 800 bucks. The AMD version has a good starting price, however it's comparable to about 965M. The Intel with the GTX 1050 offers a better experience in my opinion. So if you do decide to get the Intel version with the GTX 1050, just keep in mind you're creeping into the pricing territory of the Inspiron 7567. That one features an all new design that's very well built, IPS panel upgrade option, the ability to upgrade to a GTX 1050 Ti, and last but not least, HDMI 2.0 which will give you true 4K at 60 frames per second, unlike HDMI 1.4, which is 4K, but capped at 24 frames per second. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you guys is to save your money for the Inspiron 7567. You're gonna get a much better gaming package. Don't get me wrong, the 5576 is a great laptop, but since you're spending that much money, just save up just a few more and get a better overall machine. The new 7567 with the IPS panel upgrade is the best budget gaming laptop right now for under $1,000. The previous champ was the Legion Y520. Alright guys, this completes my full review on the new Dell Inspiron 5576. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please be sure to hit that like button if you did, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, I'll catch you guys next time.